custom game pieces made with a laser cutter. Super fun project, lasers are so cool. You can make all kinds of things from the get-go. If you're new to lasers, don't be daunted by the space. The shop, super easy to use. You can run them in your home. You don't even need other tools. So this video, I'm gonna talk about how, whether it's a chess set, uh, Settlers of Catan, Checkers, how you can make your own custom pieces, 3D, uh, three-dimensional ones, out of all kinds of different materials, whether it's solid wood, plywoods, painted pieces, acrylic, plastic options. Custom design, how do you do the software, uh, specifically showing an XCS, XTool software, how easy it is, crazy intuitive, uh, how to make your own custom pieces, custom set. Use the timestamps if you wanna skip around, uh, not just software, but also exploring some of the material types. But check it out, custom game pieces on your laser. All right, so for these pieces, primarily I'm talking about two different pieces. Now, to do this, you'd need a 3D printer to do the whole thing like this. This is, I take one sheet and I cut off the top and the bottom, and then I can friction fit the pieces together in an opening like so. So I will show this a little bit great, a lot more greater detail with the software, but I wanna talk about the materials. So you could do you know, some thinner 1 8 inch material acrylic, that's great. Uh, get a really cool look, lots of possibilities. <sighs> lots of possibilities. Um, this one right here, you can actually see this was like this queen from this chest set. It was cut here in the bottom. So eighth inch material actually works really well. Uh, if your machine can't handle the thicker stuff, you can also glue pieces together if you want a little bit thicker. This one right here, this is really cool. This is kind of a green glass or a clear uh, quarter inch. It's a really cool look, but I also engrave. So you can cut it and then engrave on the piece for even greater detail and customization. Uh, this is like the Seattle Kraken. I'm like, oh, let's make, you know, a Kraken queen, a Kraken king, buoys their mascot. You know, make that the, you know, the knight. Uh, you know, we'll have this as the tower, their, their alternate logo with a space needle. Cool, we'll get into the software, it's really cool. But wood, uh, wood is my wood shop. Obviously I love wood. And even if you don't have a wood shop with just this, right? Thin materials, pre-packaged pre stuff. Um, you don't have to have all the machines to mill it. You can get this stuff. You can cut this all out on your laser. Wow, like I'm crazy about this. So there's some really great tips on sanding. You don't have to hand sand these at all. Uh, just incredible. So lots more on these especially. All right, couple considerations, but let's jump into more on actually the software and designing these pieces. All right, the software. So folks have been asking for this for quite some time. We're finally gonna dig into it. Even if you don't use Xtool software, XCS, uh, this is still applicable. There's a lot of tips here that you're gonna wanna check out as well as some free files and some great ideas in here. So first up, uh, this is that one that I referenced, the Kraken. And so what we have here, uh, you can just see some different different designs, and we have the layer uh, here, uh, this blue layer, that's the engraving layer, and then this is the silhouette. So I had initially tried to do these hockey players, it's just a little too fragile, so I ended up doing with a different style. Uh, but then you have this little insert, this little square down below, that's gonna sit in uh, to your you know, bottom you know, circle, that looks like this. So you're gonna cut two things, right? So I cut this piece out, and I cut this piece out and then I can just fit them in like so. And so a lot of ways to do this. Um, obviously you could just get you know, a pre-made you know, silhouette file if you're doing chess. Uh, this is uh, a website I use a lot, Creative Fabrica, right? It's kind of like Etsy in the sense that there's so many different you know, files uh, out here that you can find, but it's a subscription. And so you can find just about anything in here like these chess pieces uh, if you wanna get the silhouettes already done for you or whatever, if you want to find a different file or a different, you know, like I did a pirate later. Anyway, I'll talk more about this later. Free files, great, awesome, uh, great, great deal. But let's get head back over here. Um, so I can just import uh, my image or my silhouette. So let's just go ahead and do that here. Uh, let's go ahead and pick, let's find a Kraken because that's what we're looking at here. Um, so let's just do Kraken. Yeah, I'm gonna scale it. All right, well, that's the Kraken logo, but that works. So uh, this one particular one is not an SVG already. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and edit. Yep, I don't have any blank space. And then I'm gonna trace it. Uh, and you know, I'm content with this. So you can really find any file online, uh, any JPEG uh, that's black and white. 
and now I have an SVG. So this is a PNG file and it just doesn't work as well. I mean, you can't use it for cutting. Uh, so you just convert it like this. If I wanted to engrave this, I could still engrave it, right? And it looks great. Uh, but for cutting, now I have, uh, you know, what I want if I want that outline. So let's say I wanted to do a logo, you know, with my sports team. Well, here I would take this image and I would do a little outline. Let's go ahead, let's bump it up a little bit. All right, so here's the Kraken logo. Here is that outline. And then this layer, I'm gonna right click, let's call it blue. This is my engraving layer. So if I was doing, you know, the two-tone, so this one is gonna get engraved. And then this is gonna be cut out. So if I was doing that clear glass uh, or that clear acrylic, you know, that would be a good look. Or if I was just doing wood, right, or something else, any kind of acrylic, right, I have the engraving and then there. But how do I get it to, to rest down below? Well, it's pretty straightforward. You are gonna have to do a little bit of math uh, in figuring out how thick your material is. So here you can see, let's go ahead and pull. I'll pull a couple. This one right here, um, there's a lot of other ways to do it. Trial and error definitely works. Let's ungroup. No, they aren't. Oh, I already have it together. So you can see this little hole right here. So the height is 2.68 millimeters. That means the thickness of my material uh, is that thick. So you're gonna wanna test this out a couple times. But then I'll just go ahead and take this little rectangle. I copied it over here. And I'm gonna just go ahead and shrink this sucker way down. All right. And, all right, I don't want it to go too far. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger. Okay, cool. And I got this little thing, and I gotta think about, okay, if it's gonna go down that far, I'm gonna just tuck this right there. Let's see, I'm just gonna move this out of the way for now. All right, and then, you can play around with this a lot. Uh, I'm gonna join it, all right? So now this is a piece, so when I cut it out, this little you know, rectangle here is gonna get set, is gonna sit in there like these examples. So I have this little rectangle on the bottom of all of these, that's gonna set in there. And so then I can have my engraving layer, but like that's a simple piece right there. I mean, you could do this for whatever, you know, if you wanna make a Packers set, a Cowboys set, you know, Chicago Bulls or whatever, or you know, whatever, whatever you wanna do, I can do it. We did the Seattle Kraken, uh, so it just kind of had fun there. What would be a good knight? What would be a bishop? What would be the rook? Uh, the pawns, you know, and then, and then the checker pieces went with this. Um, I have a whole other video that talks about chess, uh, chess sets and like how I built those. And I'll talk more about that later. Uh, it came with all of these in that particular file, uh, which is pretty great. But then you can customize it out here. You can do the University of Washington Husky logo and all like that. So that's just a, a quick little idea on, on how to do that. Uh, here, you know, the same idea, I wanted to make Settlers of Catan, uh, even if you're not familiar with the game uh, Settlers of Catan or Catan, however you pronounce it, uh, it's the same idea here, right? So I found a file, actually I found this little tower, I found that on Creative Fabrica because uh, I wasn't finding what I wanted on a, just a Google search. And then I did the same idea here, uh, and then I did make some more traditional pieces, kind of that classic shape. Um, of a city or here the robber uh, instead of you know this is kind of like the normal shape of the robber in the game I wanted to make it look like a pirate um, and so you can kind of play around with that obviously you know this is a pretty thin little sword here uh, but it's really fun all the possibilities here and so again going back to Creative Fabrica uh, this is a subscription so the cost of like one of these files just this file on Etsy would be about two to three bucks well, the cost of a whole month of unlimited downloads is four bucks, right? And so uh, it is amazing. And what's great about this, right? You know, obviously this isn't really as involved of, of, of a file, but it includes the commercial license. You have unlimited downloads. So if I were to, I'll show you some of my other favorites. This is where it really, you know, pays off. You know, okay, look at all of these different displays that I've, you know, all these files. I can download all of these unlimited downloads just for you know a one month subscription and so if you use my link down below it's 10 free downloads uh, and then if you want to sign up uh, you know it's like four bucks a month 
uh, some other you know incentives if you do it for the year and all that kind of stuff but I use this all the time you know I probably do you know I don't know 40 50 downloads a month uh, which would be a couple hundred bucks on Etsy uh, but here are just some of the ones that I uh, have used in some of my videos you will recognize it uh, but there's so much beyond that there's also the fonts the fonts are so cool uh, if you want to and you can just download these uh, into your software whether it's X tool or whatever laser software you have uh, which is great for engraving all the possibilities uh, there's even an AI feature in here uh, but for talking about making these pieces right if I'm looking for a specific silhouette and I can't quite find it on just like a Google search uh, there's some great ideas down there so software pretty intuitive if there's something I didn't cover with the software here for the pieces that you're a little bit more curious about just leave a comment down below and I'll try and address that I know a lot of people have been waiting about a year for me to explain uh, a little bit more detail how I did uh, these type of pieces but really you, you get your image and then you click on it make sure it's an SVG right and so if it's not you can right click or you can trace image and then do that outline feature add your rectangle you're good to go pretty fun have fun playing around with it if you have any other tips uh, for the community you can leave a comment about that down below all right lots more good stuff right here lots of tips one thing I'll say before you know after you've done all your test cuts don't do the full sheet the full batch do small chunks so I thought you know hey I have so many Let's just do the whole sheet at a time. And sometimes there's variations. Sometimes the material, right, just like wood has wood movement. Well, this you're heating up, right? And as it gets heated up, it might expand a little bit. And we're off by like one tenth of a millimeter. The piece isn't going to fit in there. And so my recommendation, instead of doing like a massive sheet all at once, do a couple at a time and just double check. You are going to find that you probably lose quite a few pieces. And so, you know, I had these, especially for this Catan set, I had all these aspirations. I dialed it in. I got the perfect friction fit to get everything to fit in just so. Oh, it's a little too loose and it comes out. And so you kind of play around with that, getting what you want. Um, with the wood, I ended up going a lot of different ways on the wood and I just didn't want to take a chance because of wood movement, it expands and it contracts. I didn't want to take a chance that this set sitting in someone's home comes apart. So I did glue. I tried wood glue and I tried some CA glue. Uh, between the two, I think CA glue is better. Uh, it's going to dry clear and then my sanding tip is going to really help. But biggest tip. When doing this, what I've learned, I learned the hard way, don't do this to yourself, is just do, you know, like here's a set for Catan, do like two or three at a time. Double check, make sure, and just because there's those variations, or just be prepared to have extra materials on hand uh, because, you know, those fluctuations were so, uh, the tolerance is so tight. Um, I just want to make sure they fit. Uh, also, you'll, you will find sometimes they're really, like this really wears on your fingers. So I did find on some of these pieces, just like a quick clamp uh, was helpful and just very slowly, but sometimes it's too tight and then you'll shatter. So plan, plan for some losses and that's okay. So really quick, just some laser cutting here with the acrylic. Uh, one thing with this clear acrylic, you will need a CO2 laser uh, like this P2 or the P2S by X-Tool. Great lasers, talk more about lasers later on. Uh, but this is great, right? This is about a quarter inch material, a little bit thicker. That green glass is a really cool look. Uh, also the clear works as well. Uh, you could do other acrylic. Acrylic really holds up well. Uh, here you can see those Catan pieces. This is just the eighth inch stuff, uh, which work great as well. Uh, maybe not as thick, but still works just as well. And you know, if you don't have as powerful a machine, I can cut through the thinner stuff that works. But just again, it's a friction fit. You're just pushing everything together. If you don't account for like what I just mentioned, uh, you'll, you'll snap the pieces a bit. So definitely do some tests and um, there you go. But the wood really is my wheelhouse and I've got some awesome tips here. So I did a lot of trial and error and hopefully you don't have to learn uh, the same way I learn with mistakes, uh, saving you some time. So I have a whole video just on how to cut, you know, the thicker hardwood, solid wood. Uh, this is not plywood, uh, but just a real quick overview how I assemble these. I cut them out. I did use some CA glue. I found that was better than wood glue. I'll put them together and it worked really well. So a friction fit is great, but because wood expands and contracts, I just don't want these pieces to come apart. Well, here they are. They are beautiful. They are gorgeous. However, there are some burn marks. Uh, there are some scuffed up edges. So 
I found this great solution of a rock tumbler. Uh, so I put these pieces in the rock tumbler with some aluminum oxide and just, you know, 120 grit, medium grit. Uh, went go, let them go for a couple days. A couple days, did a lot of trial and error with different grit. This worked really well in that large rock tumbler. And I love the rounded over look. That was a great look. I also tried another approach using a vibratory tumbler and just using walnut shells. So this is uh, walnut shells. Uh, this gave a really, really clean look. Uh, you still see those black edges, uh, but it really cleaned up any of the soot and burn marks. Uh, and then I finished with just some oil, uh, some oil wax combo, this furniture butter. And then I use corn cob media uh, to buff it. Now I have a longer video talking about uh, this process with my Settlers of Catan video, if you want more details on that. But here you can see how it turned out, uh, that corn cob media really just polished it uh, that much further, uh, got it in, cleaned it up. However, so one thing I discovered, I love that corn cob media at the end. It just made everything polished. Um, so this particular set was just, uh, was pretty clean from the get go. And so I just did the walnut shells and the corn cob. Um, it's, you still have that black, it's kind of a little sharper line. I thought it was a great look. So I did half of my sets like this. And then the other half I did uh, in the rock tumbler with that uh, aluminum oxide where it really rounded over the corners a lot. And then I followed up with the walnut shells and the corn cob media. But either way, when you end up at the end getting that buffing in, that corn cob media and the walnut shells, it's so small and you're gonna get, zoomed in here, you're gonna get all that stuff, right? Even though we glued this, it's gonna be stuck in there. And so I recommend X-Acto knife, really thin one, and then you're gonna have to clean out all that stuff. Now this is crazy time consuming, but I just got way better results um, cleaning that out. Also on the bottom, if it didn't go all the way through, you had some. And so cleaning this out, it's a pain in the butt, but honestly, I would much rather do this step. Uh, I will use the air hose and then clean it out with this. Much rather do that than have to hand sand all of these. And I just think that media works great. If you have other recommendations on media, uh, for tumblers or the vibratory tumbler or the rock tumbler, uh, drop it down below. I just wanted the small stuff, uh, the small ones to get into the nooks and crannies. But anyway, let's, uh, let's show that process, how we clean these up. So pretty straightforward, but it might be a tip for some. Air hose, air compressor makes a big difference. Got out most of it and then an X-Acto knife just to clean out all those little nooks and crannies. I think it was worth it. Got some great results. They just feel so good. Uh, you know, it's real wood. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So anyway, lots of possibilities here. Here you can see just a little bit more about these chess sets uh, with all the different chess pieces. They also come with, you know, checkers and Othello. So some other possibilities there. Uh, and then of course, the Settlers of Catan. This was such a fun project and all of the different pieces, obviously all these hardwood pieces, but then my unique, uh, you know, acrylic pieces, the unique robbers, all kinds of possibilities. You could bag these sets up, make whole sets uh, if you want to do, you know, some selling or, you know, gifts for family, all kinds of possibilities. Now I do have full videos on the chessboards and the Catan sets. Lots more tips for games, uh, some great applications, really fun projects. All right, there you have it, custom pieces, super fun. If this video provided value for you, please consider subscribing to see more videos like this. Obviously, we have the full video on the chess sets, on Settlers of Catan, lots of other videos, lots more things coming as well. If you're interested in lasers, you wanna learn more about the different ones I use, this video in particular walks you through all the different types of lasers, the pros and cons, what materials, uh, if you are interested in purchasing, uh, using our affiliate link here or uh, down in the description, it does support this channel, helps us make these videos, support my family, all that good stuff. Uh, discount codes as well. You can check that out, some great savings, but super fun. Lasers are just so cool. You can do so many things with it and be creative. So if you have other ideas, other tips, tricks, uh, resources, share them in the comments down below uh, for myself and others. And if you're looking for a little bit more deeper dive onto the software for something or something like this, uh, let me know in the comments as well. Thank you for watching and until next time, take care.